Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to another FNAF News video talking about the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative. As well as Jolly's 4, because I know a lot of you guys are excited for Jolly's 4, so I thought I'd just throw it in the video. In today's video, we have updates on Pop Goes Evergreen, Pop Goes Arcade, finally an update on FNAF 4, as well as, again, Jolly's 4, even though it technically isn't in the fanverse, even though, fun fact, it was going to be. But like I said, since I know a lot of you guys are excited for Jolly's 4, there's been a lot of new and very exciting news on the game, so I thought I'd just throw it in this video. Hopefully you don't mind. And in case you're wondering about some the other fanverse titles we just did a video on FNAF Plus. We went over all of the user interfaces that got revealed for the game as well as a few other secrets and easter eggs so if you want to go check out that video it'll be linked down below. I do have a few more topics I need to touch on with FNAF Plus seeing as you guys freaking loved that video so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future news on FNAF Plus and other fanverse and FNAF topics in general. So without further ado let's just hop into the video we got a bunch of recapping to do as well as some brand new news on Pop Goes Evergreen. So first up, we have some beautiful art done by Stupid Butterfly for Halloween as well as Valentine's. You can see Pop Goes is in a glowing skeleton costume. Stone the Crow has turned into Stone the Scarecrow. Saffron is rocking a fantastic ghost costume. Sarah is a witch and Blake is a zombie. And then for Valentine's, we got some art of Menorah the Mouse. And this is a reveal of her cartoon design for the Pop Goes Pizzeria. We also got a small but interesting update from Kane over on Twitter regarding the music and ambiance in the game. He said Pop Goes Evergreen is going to feature quote dynamic night ambiance. Music that changes throughout the night based on how much panic you currently have. A bass music track and five additional layers stacked on top. And it's finished and it's awesome thanks to the amazing Radiarch. So that's very exciting. Based on how much panic you have in the game, the music will most likely get more intense, more panic inducing. Next up, we have the character reveal of Blake the Badger. This was from a couple months ago, I'm very late to this, but this is the official redesign of Blake for Pop Goes Evergreen. And then we also got a whole bunch of renders for him. Technician, confirm, waving, panic, and sleep mode. I love the belt he's got. He looks so friendly. Honestly, I, I love the design. He looks so cool. And actually going to the devlog post on the Game Jolt page for the game Kane stated, you'll see that he has a Weaselware phone, a lanyard, a tool belt, a USB charger, and more. Something new. In Pop Goes Evergreen, Blake actually starts in the server room and makes his way towards the player. The server room has a charging pad on the floor for Blake to charge himself with, which you can see under him in the sleep mode image will reveal more about Blake in the future. So that is a look at the new Blake design for Pop Goes Evergreen. Tell me what do you think about the new design in the comments down below. Sticking with character designs, we have Saffron the Squirrel, the second half to the Saffron and Sarah dynamic duo, and here are some various renders of the brand new Saffron design. You got her on the show stage, the sporty design, waving, panic, and crawling. And it looks like, kind of similar to Sarah, Saffron will take off her tail and skirt so that she can fit into smaller spaces. Once again, I think this is a fantastic design. I absolutely adore the character designs for Pop Goes Evergreen. Something else I love are the attention to details in the rooms. And now we finally have a look at the party room. So this is a brand new room that got revealed alongside Blake in Daco's charity stream not too, too long ago. And once again, I am adoring how this looks. The attention to detail is fantastic. I absolutely love it. And it really does look like an actual party room that you would see in a pizzeria. And now let's talk about some very exciting news regarding Pop Goes Arcade, which technically, yes, is a part of the fanverse and is getting a very, very exciting paid expansion very soon. It was revealed admittedly, quite a long time ago, I just haven't gotten around to it, my bad, that the DLC will be called Pop Goes and the Machinist. Pop Goes and the Machinist is a, quote, sequel to Pop Goes the Dead Forest, which is the name of the arcade game you play in Pop Goes Arcade. If you pay for the premium upgrade to Pop Goes Arcade, you will be able to play Pop Goes and the Machinist once you obtain 100% completion in the main game. It'll be a direct continuation of your journey. Pop Goes and the Machinist is about half the size of the current main game. If you consider Pop Goes Arcade to be split into two parts, one where you fight the mini-bosses and then one where you fight the dead mini-bosses, then you can sort of expect Machinist to be a third part in the Pop Goes adventure. When is it coming out? We're not sure, but the goal is for it to release before the end of the year. Obviously, 
that did not quite happen. How much will it cost? I have no idea. It's not something I'll be deciding on by myself. Why is this paid for? All of the ports for the Fanverse games are paid for, and I decided to work on this expansion for Arcade to incentivize and reward people for paying for their mobile console copies of Arcade. When I announced this, I got a lot of requests for a PC version of the expansion for those who don't play on consoles. So I spoke with Scott and ClickTeam and it seems to be possible. Where can we play this? When everything is finished, we're going to see if we can publish Pop Goes Arcade, the original version, on Steam, which will then have the premium upgrade which includes The Machinist as a paid DLC option on the store page. The mobile and console ports of Arcade might have actual payments integrated into the game, we'll see. And finally, who is The Machinist? Oh, well, that is a question we can answer. The Machinist is, and then it goes off. Interestingly enough, the code in that message deciphers too, you need to stop asking so many questions. Also in the same charity stream, we got Blake revealed to us, we also got Robot Blake from the brand new Pop Goes and the Machinist paid expansion. This is Robot Blake. He was also featured on the poster for the Machinist as the enemy that Pop Goes is squaring up on. The second image is showing him scratching the player and though the perspective and coloring makes it look a little confusing, it's perfectly fine when animated in-game. And then finally, for Pop Goes and the Machinist, we got a sneak peek of some gameplay of a brand new area. It looks to be in some sort of cave, maybe a mine shaft, and interestingly enough, there's also a camera in the top right that follows Pop Goes as he walks around. So that is all the updates on the paid expansion to Pop Goes Arcade Pop Goes and The Machinist. Unfortunately, it's still kind of unclear when the expansion is coming out, hopefully pretty soon though. And now let's move on to something that's not fanverse, but again, is still super exciting, Jolly's 4. So if you don't know, Jolly 4 is a fan game of FNAF. and was actually going to be in the fanverse, but it's based off a real life restaurant, Jolly Bees, so copyright kind of you can't do that in the fanverse. But thankfully, we're still getting another entry into the series, and this is some of the brand new news. So first up, this is a look at Jolly Good Time. Funny, funny name. The brand new version of Jolly for the fourth game, and my gosh, dude, he looks so good. Especially that endoskeleton. Ooh, I'm a sucker for endos. And then we had George Good Time revealed to us. And then in a massive devlog post, we got a whole bunch of teasers and updates. First up, they changed how the hands look. The old design is more cartoony. The new design is more robotic, animatronic-like, and also a lot more terrifying. They gave a sneak preview of the soundtrack for the game. Then we got a brand new teaser called The Week Ahead, showing off a schedule for Jolly Entertainment. Then we got a gameplay teaser of the warehouse's venture ventilation system, as well as a sneak peek at the map and mechanics for the nights ahead. And finally, in this devlog, we got a hallway teaser showing off George Goodtime looming in the background. And finally, for devlogs, we got the official reveals of all of the new character designs for the Goodtime family. So first up, here is a full body reveal of George Goodtime, and then we got a closer look at their face, the full character design for Maxie, once again, a closer look at their face, the full body reveal of Tweety, who would have thought once again zooming in on their face. And finally, we got that gangly puppet thing. And once again, that's right, a zoom in on their face. So that is a look at some gameplay teasers as well as the brand new Good Time family members. Their designs look absolutely amazing, I freaking love them. But that's not the biggest news. The biggest news is this. A sneak preview of the trailer one for Jolly 4 coming soon. Honestly, the sneak peek alone is freaking amazing and has me hyped a lot. You can see some free roam elements in the teaser and my god, dude, it just, it looks phenomenal. So we don't know exactly when we're getting the trailer one for Jolly 4, but it is very, very exciting. And the final news for Jolly 4 is that Ultra Knight's dad played it. Massive news, I know. But hey, at least we know that there is currently at least a playable build of Jolly's 4. That's exciting. And now we move on to the final topic for today's video. Going back to the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative, talking about FNAC 4. We don't get many updates on Candies 4, so when we do get one, it's kind of a big deal, even though this one is really small. So back in February, we got a new devlog post by Emil called Another Update. I thought I'd make a small update. 
This past year, well, last year, I've been making some progress I'm really happy with, especially in the past few months. I've been working as hard as I can on a selection of things, ranging from FNAF 4 stuff to the FNAF trilogy updates. It's very exciting when working on this stuff, anticipating your reactions to it once it releases ha ha. I can't really talk much about specifically what is coming up next, but I think you'll really like it. Thanks yet again for your amazing patience, and remember to stay tuned. Now you may notice that there are a couple bold letters throughout the post, and they do spell out a secret message. And that message is, don't forget. I think Emil forgot to give us brand new messages, because I feel like we've seen don't forget and don't forget me at least five times leading up to this game. But that is just a small update on Candies 4. Seems like we're getting something big soon, hopefully. Though it is nice to get, you know, small little updates here and there on how development's going. And I guess we're just gonna have to wait and stay tuned for more info concerning FNAC. But that is all the fanverse and Jolly 4 updates for today. What are you most excited for? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching another FNAF news video, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.